Hey FlossTube, it's me Hannah the Okie Stitcher here with another FlossTube update. Today is Sunday the 13th of May 2024. It is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all those in mother-like roles out there. Um, okay, so I've got a lot to talk about today, so I'm just going to get straight into it. I did stop over at um, the Silver Needle in Tulsa because I was passing through and it was kind of a frustrating experience. Um, I stopped in specifically for Karen Water Lilies and Krynik for my Nightingale Mirabilia, the nursing one. And they didn't carry either of those. Um, so long story short, I did not buy anything. And a trip that would have only been like five minutes turned into like 15 minutes because the employee would stop, would not stop talking. And like, I kept telling her that I didn't want anything else. And she just kept like, well, here's Mill Hills. I was like, I don't want any Mill Hills. And she was like, well, what about this? And I was like, I don't want that. I just want to leave. <laughs> but she, okay, so this was something that was frustrating in the moment, but like looking back, it was kind of funny. So she asked why I wanted Karen Water Lilies and Krynik. And I was like, well, for my Mirabilia. And she was like, no one stitches Mirabilias anymore. They're not popular. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, they're all over social media. And she was like, we only have one customer and we have international customers. Like she kind of had like this attitude and everything. And she was like, no one orders Mirabilias or Nord Corbett's. And I was like, well, they probably don't because, you know, if they order from you, you know, frequently, unlike myself, they probably know that you don't carry it, so they probably just don't bother with it. But they want to support a local shop. And she was like, well, you know, it may be popular in your circle, but it's not popular anywhere else. And I was like, my circle? The internet? <laughs> the internet? <laughs> so it was... Yeah, it was frustrating in the moment because she just would not stop like bad mouthing Mirabilia and Nora Corbett. But looking back, it was it was so funny. It was it's probably one of those areas like you had to be there in the moment, but <laughs> so anyway, the reason why I wanted to get those in store is because I've never bought those before. And sometimes they can be labeled different things on different websites and that doesn't always match up with what uh, the pattern is calling for or like how it's worded on the pattern and so I just kind of went in some reassurance by an actual person a experienced stitcher that I was getting the right thing but I wasn't gonna get that there <laughs> so either I'm going to I don't know like Either I'm going to wait till I just happen to be close to another stitchy store or I'm just going to roll the dice and and buy it online and just hope for the best. So that was my stitchy story in Tulsa. Okay, um, but the reason why I was in Tulsa, not only passing through, but because I stopped to see a friend that I hadn't seen in years and we stopped at the Purple Glaze, which was a couple of blocks from the Silver Needle. And it was her treat. She got me a yarn bowl and I painted it. It was really pretty color. I'll just show you sometime once I get it back from her. Um, but I love it. She showed me pictures and it's so cute. Um, this is just like another piece to the crochet puzzle though because I will be starting crochet at some point like it won't be anytime soon but like I got hand-me-down hooks from my oldest daughter now I got a yarn bowl from my friend I mean and there's plenty of free easy 
uh, starter patterns on the internet and I bought myself a cheap uh, skein of yarn the other day at Hobby Lobby, well, say the other day, like a couple months ago at Hobby Lobby, so it's just like, whatever. And, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> I could go on and on about, like, my trip to, to the Silver Needle and Purple Glaze, and that was a fun day. Another fun day, the next day, I went to a thrillers game with my youngest daughter. Okay, so this is not since you related, obviously, because it's baseball. But my, it was just extra special because when I was a kid, my dad used to take me to see the drillers, which is a minor league baseball game or baseball team in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I grew up going there at least once a summer. Um, my dad would take me special Olympics cause my brother is in special Olympics. Um, they would do like a special Olympics night. And so we would go at least once a year, sometimes more. And I saw my dad after me and my daughter went to the game and he was like, how'd you like the new stadium? I was like, I didn't even notice there was a new stadium. I noticed that I had to pay for parking and we didn't have to pay for parking when I was a kid. And he was like, you noticed that there was a charge and parking, but that there wasn't a new stadium. <laughs> and then like after he mentioned it, I realized that, yeah, it was a new stadium because like when I was a kid, it was like all bleachers. Now it's like the actual stadium seating and yeah. Yeah, so oblivious, <laughs> oblivious moment there. Um, but a fun thing that happened when we were at the Drillers game was, okay, so the Girl Scouts were all seated together and one troop, so there was only three troops there and one troop went to go sit on like the little meadow area, which is just like a little piece of grass that you can sit on and two of us stayed there and so in my daughter's troop it was just me and her like no other scouts went and so we towards the end of the game we were invited like the two troops that were there were invited to go down to the field and watch the fireworks at the end of the game and so that was so much fun uh, watching the the fireworks from down below and I got a couple of pictures okay so I, I put them in my book of days because as I discussed before this is kind of like my little mini scrapbook mostly stitch related but it is a little bit of a scrapbook so me and my youngest and then this is her on the field with a BOK okay in the background and then there was some dead space so I put vans um, Vans is actually my running shoe. I did, don't wear them for like everyday uh, use, but they are really good running shoes. I think they're actually labeled like trail shoes or hiking. I don't think they're hiking shoes, but I think they're trail shoes is what they're labeled as. So if you were in the market for a running shoe, you may want to try them. Okay. So, let's see, what else happened in April? Solar Eclipse. John graduated with his master's, which that was yesterday. And, um, like, the commencement ceremony was yesterday, but he actually graduated last month. Um, and so that was really cool. Got to see, see his graduation. And I think that's it. Oh, another non-stitchy thing. Okay, try to keep this short, but this is big news. So my retraining, right? Got approved. Big Air Force has signed on the dotted line saying that I am good to go to retrain into paralegal. <sighs> Weight off my shoulders, okay? So I... I'm keeping my LPN license 
and my paramedic license. So like I am still a nurse and I am still a paramedic. I am just not a military medic anymore, but I will be a paralegal. So yes, I am just waiting on a class date, which I have a vague idea. Like I know when the next two dates are, so I have a vague idea of when I'm leaving. I just don't have the official confirmation. Um, but that's going to come down pretty quickly because yeah, it, it just does, you know, like you wait and wait, wait for months. And then all of a sudden it's like, here you go. You're leaving next week. And it's like, oh crap, there's so much to do. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I am getting the house ready for market because I want it to be on market before I go to tech school, which that is like, whew still a lot left like I am in the home stretch but there's still a lot left to do and if you've ever put a house on the market or ever moved you understand a little bit of what I'm going through <laughs> okay so um so that is that with that being said though I don't know when I'm gonna film again I don't know if I'm gonna stick with weekly the go to bi-weekly go to monthly I don't know I am just going to fly by the seat of my pants and it's probably just honestly going to be sporadic for a while until I figure out what's going on. Um, so yeah. Okay. So let's get into like actual legit stitching now and not just a bunch of random semi stitching, semi not stitching stories. I have a finish. Okay. So this one, right? That I've been working on for a while. This is the Etsy shop that I bought the pattern from. Called the midwife. I have been stitching this. And I have been having issues with my camera focusing. So I apologize ahead of time if it doesn't want to focus. So this is on 25 count steel blue Lagana, just Hobby Lobby brand. I put the extra back in its package. So this is what it looks like. And I stitched it with Weak Style Works Calypso. And as you can tell, I used pretty much a whole skein of floss on this pattern. Um, the pattern called for 14 count. This is 25 count. So if you do stitch it on 14 count, then make sure that whatever you buy, you buy, you know, two or three skeins because you're going to need it. I did one strand over one box. So one over one. And this is just hanging out until I can find a safe spot for my needle. I just finished it last night. I was a week behind on watching season 13. So I watched season, sorry, episode seven last week and then episode eight last night and finished it. It was so good. So yeah, so that is that. That is my finish. And then going on to my lunch stitching. So I bounced back and forth between Coraline and Esmeralda. So this is Coraline. It is on 14 count white Eda. And it is really coming to life. So I got the cat down here, cat with no name. And then you can really see Coraline coming out here. And this is called for DMC and this is two over one box. And then Esmeralda is on 18 count white Ada, two over one. And this one, I have done almost all of the X's 
and I'm working on the back stitching as you can tell by her dress. And this is one that the focus is not doing it justice. But this one, there's a lot of back stitching on it. So I think what I'm going to do is just sit down sometime this week, maybe tonight, and just hammer it out. Because that back stitching is, um, like, you really, really got to pay attention to it. And I feel like if I do this at work, I'm going to end up with a lot of mistakes. And then it's going to be really difficult to pick out the back stitching without messing up the X's because it's kind of, um, you know, I mean, it's 18 count, so it's kind of close together. And I don't want to mess up the back stitching. So this will for sure be done next time I film, whether it's next week or next month. Then I did a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit on my oldest daughter's stocking. This is 14 count Grace Notes fabrics, and it is this one. R H Y S. Yeah. Reyes, maybe. And then called for DMC, except for the red. The called for was like an orangey rust color. And I didn't like it, so I changed it out. And then move my needle minder over from the call a midwife piece to this piece. That was a friend, a, a gift from a friend, Becky Cat Chris. So yeah, I'm working on that. And then I got yellow submarine with my Crowley needle minder. This is 28 count. Lugana, called Bell from Grace Notes. And I finished the outline for this yellow. This is um, called for Gentle Arts Floss. And I am, I finished the outline for this yellow and then I'm just filling it in. I'm doing one strand over one box, so one over one. And then for this one, I definitely want to do some modifications because at first, when I first got the pattern, this is the Blackbird Yellow Submarine. When I first got it, I was, I fell in love with the whole thing. But then as I started like really looking at the detail of the motifs, I was like, I don't really like it. I love the yellow submarine and like the anchor is cute. This is cute. I don't like the top border. The bottom border is mm. I, the fish is kind of weird with the banner. Um, like, they don't look bad, okay? Don't get me wrong. Like, I am not bad mouthing this pattern. They do not look bad. But they're not cute enough for me to stitch. Does that make sense? So, I think I'm going to finish out, you know, like, obviously I'm going to finish out the yellow submarine because I love it. And then I think I'm going to, like, redo the 2006 and I'm going to put it over here, maybe. I would like to put a flute in there because, you know, like a couple of videos back, I explained like my whole story behind the yellow submarine. So I don't know. Like, I just been playing with so many different ideas for this pattern and I can't decide on what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my time on stitching the yellow submarine. And as I'm stitching it I'm just gonna think about it because I'm really not in a hurry so just gonna take my time and enjoy it I did notice though that 28 count 
is a little difficult for me. I am doing it one over one, like I said. And so like the box themselves, I can see perfectly fine, but then the floss is kind of, um, poofy, like fluffy for the boxes. And so when I do the X, cause I'm doing full X's, they kind of hide the one next to it. And so I am, as I'm stitching, I'm kind of having some difficulty seeing what I'm stitching. So I am really thinking about investing in some magnifiers. I would like to get like a little lamp because I think like with my glasses, the, you know, like the glass looking ones, I think those would hurt my eyes and my nose and whatnot. So if you have any suggestions on a good magnifying lamp, like I don't, I don't know. I am open to suggestions. So please let me know what you think because um, obviously I want to finish stitching on this fabric because it's so pretty, but I also have a real big one that I bought in 18 count that I want to stitch one over one. So I'm going to need something for that. And then my call the midwife piece is also in 28 count. And that might be one reason why I'm having difficulty stitching on it that in it's on black fabric. So I have several 28 counts now that I'm going to need it for. But once I get done with all this 28 count fabric, I think I'm going to stop buying it and only do like 25 and higher. Like 25 to 18, I think is kind of like my sweet spot. Because, yeah. yeah. That is my sweet spot. 20, 25 to 18. Okay. Oh, I do have something that I want to start soon. So look at this. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? This is Grace Nose Fabrics called Once Upon a Time. And this is going to be my youngest daughter's stocking. So she chose Aristocats. And that pattern is also off of Etsy. And I am going to start this different. Like normally I start down at one of the bottom corners. Let's take that back. Any corner. And I go up. Well, I started at the fattest corner. So like in a stocking, I normally start at the toe and then go up. But she wants her name more in the purple and like the sky and everything like she wants this like change and so it's hard for me to start down here and work my way up because I may not capture that as much so I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down so that's gonna be a little different um the stocking I don't have a cover photo because a lot of Etsy sellers don't have cover photos which is a real shame but in the toe, it has a lot of snow and ornaments and then the, the three cats. And then it goes up into like trees and snowflakes. And I think I'm going to omit the trees because they just look kind of funny. Um, but I'm going to do a lot of snowflakes and then her name up top. So, so yeah, 14 count. And then... Just got to get fabric for my husband's and I'll start his too. Oh, so pretty. But that is it. Um, I don't really have any like concrete plans other than just keeping with what I got going on. What I just said. So. Oh, I do have someone to talk about today. Um, the channel name is Thread Gremlins and I... 
I don't have any notes with me today, so I'm going off memory, so hopefully I don't butcher this. Don't really have notes. I don't know names, because I'm terrible at names. Don't. <laughs> don't hate me. Um, but they are both doing The Frog Widow, or Widow Frog. I think it's by Night Spirit Studios, but I'm not entirely sure. They are doing them um, slightly different, and so I really enjoy seeing the differences between the two. And, you know, human-like animals don't normally appeal to me, but for some reason, that one is appealing to me. Really enjoy seeing it stitched. Um, one is working on the Greek gods. And they're subbing out some of the details of the motifs to represent some of the family members. And that's going to be a gift for their son. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, the other one, she is doing like a book, uh, like a memory book of the family's artwork. And so like her daughter did a painting and then she did... A cross stitch piece so she like punched out the holes and then she like stitched it up and it's so cool I think it's if I remember correctly they're flowers but it was really cool so I definitely recommend their channel they're only like somewhere between four and six videos so you'll be able to catch up real easy to their channel um, and that is it that was a lot of talking in 26 minutes, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I look forward to catching up with you next time I get an opportunity. All right. Well, have a good one. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.